using the nose picker. <laughs> the nose hair trimmer. <laughs> oh yeah, the, <laughs> the nose hair trimmer. Uh, not terribly inspiring day today, but we've Gavin's found this creek and it looks like it's frozen really nicely. So we're in Strathcona Provincial Park and we're going to head down this canyon and, uh, and have a quick look. Looks promising, so fingers crossed. I wasn't actually, but... So the creek continues up here, but it's, it's absolutely beautiful. The, uh, all the chandelier ice, especially up here, we can just take you over here. It's not just one big sheet of ice, there's, there's just tons of icicles coming down. So I think I could get a pretty nice shot out of this. It will just be a pattern shot, no real center of interest, just the interest of the, the ice chandeliers coming down. like I, I do with the uh, the forest it's very easy to get caught up in the whole grand scene and you know when you look at this whole canyon it looks really beautiful and your instinct is to slap on a, a reasonably wide angle lens and photograph the whole canyon but I know that if I do that then the image is just going to get lost it's going to get lost in details so I'm approaching this like I would when I photograph uh, woodland or forest. Try to pick out smaller details within the larger composition, so to speak. So right now I have a little area here. There's some beautiful ice surrounding this creek. And then of course there's still water flowing through the middle. So with a relatively slow shutter speed, there's a nice contrast between the sharp ice and the moving water. I mean, in theory, anyway. So I'll show you the composition that I have, and then, uh, you know, hopefully it'll work out. Okay, now hopefully I'm not too close here, and hopefully you can see this, but you can kind of see I have the, the creek, it, it's got this nice kind of U shape in it. it, has a bit of a shape to it. So I put it right in the middle because I think I'm gonna probably crop it uh, square or perhaps four by five. I just love that contrast between the moving water and uh, the sharp ice. Anyway, that's the composition. I, I hope it works. Uh, it's really starting to snow heavily now, so it's, it's getting kind of tricky. But, uh, oh, the challenges of uh, winter photography.
Now out of the four or five images that I took in the canyon, I think this is probably my favorite. It's more of an overall view, uh, but I've tried to keep it relatively simple by just including uh, a small section of the creek that's that's not frozen and these kind of uh, rocks that have uh, big globs of ice on top of them. They almost act as stepping stones through the frame and then you end up at the curtain at the back. Now there was quite a bit more to this photograph uh, lengthways. I, I tend to uh, like the 4x5 format more than the uh, the 2x3 format. Uh, it just looks it just looks more natural to my eye. Perhaps it's from my 4x5 days, but I, I really do like this photograph. It just has such a, a really great wintry feel to it. Now, unfortunately, uh, the snow started to come down really heavily and it was covering up all these great ice patterns so we decided to pack our bags and start to head uh, northwest towards an area called Upana Caves. You know on my YouTube channel quite a few people have posted comments saying you and I should do workshops together. You know, it's funny you should say that because I get the same comments, probably from the same people. Yeah, probably my mother. <laughs> <laughs> but if we were to do one, where would you want to do it? Well, it would have to be somewhere, nice place to hang out, maybe slight wildernessy feel to it, perhaps a beach. San Joseph Bay. Hey, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, we'd have to make it really special something very exclusive how about we just invite 10 people yeah uh have all the tents and everything all set up yeah because we'd have to camp right and then we could have campfires oh yeah bring in a caterer caterer so then we are free to just do instruction And when, when would you want to do this? Like, when would it be a good time to, to uh, do a workshop? Well, I'm glad you asked that, Adam, because we're going to do it June 7th, 8th and 9th. It's a weekend. We're going to drive you up there all the way from Nanaimo, get straight to the beach. The tents will all be set up, campfires on, caterer has got the food ready. All you've got to do is bring your camera bag, your tripod, some clothes and a sleeping bag. So registration for this special workshop opens on February 16th and there's only 10 places available. So if you want to get on this workshop, jump on it. Hope to see you there. All right, now then, Gavin and I have driven miles and miles up island so we're in central western vancouver island it's a good three hour drive from parksville <laughs> so we've we've ended up at uh upana caves which is actually is an area that i've i've never been to before um so i'm quite excited to go here it's always great to go to to, to new areas uh obviously there's no one here i mean this place is out in the middle of nowhere uh, the roads uh, are reasonably clear, so that's good, and uh, the sun's actually come out, so... But uh, I have seen images of the cave, usually looking out at the main entrance, so it'll be interesting to see what's around. I know some of the creeks here are quite frozen, so uh, there might be some, some neat icicles or waterfalls or, or anything like that. Right, I'll go and get my camera gear and, uh, and we'll see what we can come up with. Oh, we're, we're both in blue. Uh,
look. I don't know if you can see that, but this rock almost looks like a face from the side here. It's really eerie. Okay, and this is where things started to go badly for both of us, but I think uh, I fared better than Gavin. Uh, you'll notice that he took a pretty bad wipeout right here. Uh, Upana Caves is a very neat area, but very hard to photograph. We, we had a few ideas of, of how we could photograph this area. Uh, one was to wait for it to get dark, kind of like the caves in, uh, in Kootenai National Park and then just start to light paint throughout. And we did try that, but fiddling around with uh, the results that I got in Photoshop, I, I just couldn't make any of the images that I had uh, work. Perhaps uh, Gavin might have something. Okay, I'm in one of the main caverns here. And uh, as always, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with the compositions here. I, I, I'm doing a little bit of experimentation here. I'll show you the composition that I have. I have no idea if it's going to work, but you know, you have to experiment now and then to kind of get out of the, doing the same old, same old all the time. Okay, so this is, the, uh, this is the scene that I'm photographing here. It's very dark in here. Uh, and this is the, uh, the composition that I have. Now, there's the log in the middle with the, uh, the ice on it. But what I like is kind of these zigzagging lines. So we have a darker limestone at the bottom of the frame and then a lighter. So there's, there's uh, three or four triangles or three or four triangular shapes. And then we've got the log in the middle. And I'll probably crop this either to a square or a four by five. I'm not sure. It might work as a black and white. Uh, anyway, it's an experimentation. We'll, uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, it could just be a load of rubbish <laughs> or it could be quite good. everybody thanks again for watching this week's video uh, be sure to give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and as always if you enjoy the content on my channel don't forget to subscribe all right everybody thanks ever so much and i will catch you next week